What's good YouTube? Wave Magnetic here with another video for you. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about how I produced my song uh, Lying on the Sky. It came out mm, January, sometime in January. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to break this up into three sections. Uh, so this video in particular is going to be talking about how I produced the song. Um, I always break up when I work on a song into three sections. So it'll be when I produce the track, then it'll be when I mix the track, and then it'll be when I master the track. I, I do those all separately because, I don't know, for some people you can produce and mix at the same time, but for me, when I do it that way, I never get a good mix. So this video is going to be about producing. I'll put another video out about how I mixed it, and then I'll do another video about how I mastered it, even though I kind of do those in the same session, but I do them at different times. All right, so check it out. This is how I started the production. Um, the most important sound on this song is this little uh, guitar sample I created. Uh, let's see here. Listen to this. Uh. So that's pretty much uh, what that guitar sound sounds like. Now, the way I made this is kind of interesting. I, I can't really break it down too much, uh, but I created, I just went to uh, inside of Ableton. There's a stock. Let's see here. There's a stock guitar sound. Uh, well, let's just see here. Guitar. Um. Yeah, there's a sound in here that just says like guitar. And it's actually not a bad guitar sound. It actually sounds pretty cool. It's pretty close to guitar right here. This one uh, where it says guitar open. So I took that. I made some chords. Yeah, you see, you just heard it. Let's hit it again. Yeah. So I took that and I made some chords with it. And after I made the chords... Then um, what cool thing that you can do with Ableton is that you can stretch audio out pretty easily. So like this is the audio. It's already stretched out. But just to give an example, if you listen to this, it sounds already kind of warped. Actually, let me take all of this stuff off because I did a lot to it. So this is what it sounds like with regular. So that's already stretched out because I already had done that. But. All you got to do is set the warp on and then um, set it to complex and don't leave it on beats. It'll sound kind of weird. But if you put it on complex and then you have it warped and you hit this little two button and now it'll sound really wacky. Listen. Right. And this is what it was before. You see what I'm saying? So it stretches it out. It keeps the same tone and it just sounds really like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's really weird. So I stretched it out and then I chopped up all of the chords until I got a cool chord progression that sounded cool to me. And, you know, something that sounded like, like I could write to it. And what I came up with was what I just showed you. If I can get this thing back where it's supposed to be. There we go yeah that's where it's supposed to be so i chopped it up into these little sections and i created this chord progression and then to mess it up even more i put the ott on it so let's see an ott is literally um it's a preset in ableton um if you check out right here, so it's the multiband dynamics compressor. If you go in, there's a setting that says OTT. And that's what it is. It's the same thing as that uh there's a plugin that um was it X for Records did. Uh I think it's just called OTT. And basically it's this preset. And they put it in a plugin form so that anybody who doesn't have Ableton can still use this. So I just used the preset from um from the multiband dynamics 
And this is what it sounds like. And without it. Makes it sound a little weird. Then the next thing I did was I put that RC20 on there. This right here is a really cool plugin. It'll, it kind of makes stuff, um, I guess they say it's supposed to sound like it was on a record or something or on a tape or something. I don't know. But it messes up the sound in a really nice way. So let's see what it sounds like with it on there. So it's really cool, like if you mess with the uh, wild and flutter on here, the wobble, it's really cool. Check it. <laughs> yeah, it can, the sound can get pretty, pretty wacky real fast if you let it. So I put that on there and then I just put some reverb on here. Pretty simple, basic reverb from uh, Ableton. If you just use a stock Ableton uh, reverb, you really just throw it on there with the way it's the way it sounds like in the beginning. Uh, it doesn't sound bad at all. You just play with the um, the dry wet and how long you want it to be. Make sure it says uh, high quality here, and you can mess with the decay time and mess with this dry wet control, and it, you can get some really cool sounds out of it. So that right there is like what I did first and then I wrote to this. So from here, so the next thing was a bass line. Um, and it ain't nothing really special. A lot of times the best sounds are the simple ones. So like with this right here, this wavetable, the wavetable plugin with Ableton, it's fire. So like, don't sleep on it. All this is is a sine wave that, that's between like a sine and a triangle wave. And uh, it's low. And that's about it. And I put some distortion on it. I just distorted it with the amp. Cut off some of the highs, put a decapitator on it, which is more distortion basically and cut off some more of the highs and then I compressed it. Sometimes when you compress a sound, it really, really brings it, brings out all the fine details of it. And that's when it just sounds like this. So like when you have your subs, a lot of times you want to add distortion to it. You don't want it just to be a pure sine wave because then when you listen to it on smaller speakers, it doesn't really cut through. And then also too, even on big speakers, you'll be able to feel the note really well with just the sine wave. But sometimes it's hard to tell what the note is. Um, these, uh, when you add that distortion to it, it's easier for you to tell what the actual pitch is because um, it's too low. It just be too low. There ain't nothing else to say about that. Uh, let's see here. And then I added some chords here. This is my favorite pad sound. So like, this is uh, it's really simple sounds here. So I use Serum a lot because I paid for it and I do not plan on buying a whole bunch of synths when you can pretty much do everything you need to with this. So um, I tried to make it sound kind of like an analog synth. Um, so I went in here to the analog, um, what is these, wavetables, and I picked this basic MCB, and this is kind of like a, this is a sine wave, I mean a, a saw wave, but it's like, not a per, it's not perfect, so like, it's got a little bit of messed up, and you see it curves a little bit, and I found a spot that sounded good, set the, detune, uh, set the unison to 5, detune is what, 12 or whatever. But what really makes the sound is the randomness of the pitch. So if you didn't know, there's this little oscillator called a chaos oscillator in um, Serum. So that right there will give you random movements. It's not in time. It's Because if you use the LFO down here, uh, it'll be in a particular time. And it'll be, you know, you can kind of tell that it's it's not random but the chaos one is random. So 
you have to access it from the matrix though. You can't just drag and drop with the uh, with the chaos uh, LFO. So if you go into the matrix, you can pick it right here, all right? And I have it set to oscillator A, the fine tune, and I have it set to go back and forth. See how the arrow goes back and forth. And then you just mess with the amount until you get what you're looking for. And that's literally all the sound is. Really simple sound. Uh, but it sounds really cool when you put it in context. Because now... That's really cool. So from there, I came up with some lyrics and uh, a melody. So I just recorded in the melody. Lying on the sky Twinkle in my eye Lying on the sky Never say goodbye and that's pretty much the whole lyrics to the whole song. All the lyrics. And with this, I put uh, a gate on it to get rid of some of the room noise. Uh, I put some auto-tune on it because it needed it. And I'm not uh, the greatest singer in the world. I just try to make great music. You feel me? I put the RC20 on here because I like the way this distortion was. And it makes it sound like it came from, like it was a sample from a record. Uh, let's see here. I use some EQ on here. I like T-Rex's EQ81. Put a little top in on it. A little bite. Uh, 3.9K. That's like for men. Like uh, right in here. Bite. And uh, let's see. Got a little bit of boxing this out at 470. And uh, cut off the lows at 100. It's pretty simple stuff. Put a compressor on it. Oh, actually, I put two compressors on here. Yeah, I put the yeah the, uh, the black seventy six again. It's T Rex stuff, so it's like a eleven seventy six. Just compress that there and put the LA two A on here, and that all put together sounded pretty good. And uh, let's see what else I got here. And I cut out some more. 492 just because I guess it felt boxy and then I put some harmony on here Lying on the sky. Twinkle in my eye. so it's actually kind of a cool effect like sometimes you know panning matters so I took this and just put a hard left, hard right, and it left room open for the trumpet to come through, but not be too in the way so you can hear everything. Uh, so obviously the next thing is, oh, wait a minute, I gotta do some drums. Once I had all of that, I definitely did the drums. So the drums sound like this. So drums are really simple. I just had to think of a groove that I liked. Um, here's a kick. I made this kick actually. This is a really cool kick I made in. Uh, I made it in uh, Kick Two. If y'all know that plugin, I got this sample from Splice, and I used some. I think I used some a tambourine. Yep. So here's a cool thing. Okay, you guys, you like this. A tambourine, uh, where is it at? There it is. So the tambourine, if you just have a tambourine going, it, it can be like not so happening. So let's see. If you just go like this. You see how it says, ta -ta 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 -ta. but if you change the volume of every other on a tambourine, because the tambourine, you go like this, okay? So the upstroke, let's see, yeah, the upstroke is usually quieter than the downstroke. So if you go down, it goes bang, up, quiet, down, hard, up, quiet. So 
I basically programmed that in by making it louder with the uh, velocity. So these little red knobs down here, all the way up, down, volume up, volume down, volume up. So it gives you a bounce to it. Something like this. See? So we got that going. I have a ride symbol going, uh, let's see, here. I'm sorry, I got crashed too. And then you add some kick action and some snare action. And then you throw in a little clap action just to make it pop a little more. And that's all I did with the drums. So once I had that going, I changed the bass. Uh, right here was the wavetable bass. Here, I this is the 808 that I created. And then this, I made it, I think I made it actually in wavetable. Um, but the point is, is that I made the audio, then I put it in a simpler, and uh, now I use it as its own instrument. And if you look, one of the keys to having a really good bass line is to make it follow the kick drum. If you look, here's my kick, here is my bass. They line up, it lines up, there's a kick, there's a bass, kick, bass. See that? Kick, bass, kick, bass. Same exact time. Kick, now this would be weird. I mean, it's really fast. So I only put one, but it comes at the same time as the first one. Kick, you see? It lining up. It's all lining up. So you want it to line up and then just follow the bass. Just follow what the root note of the chord is. Check it out. You listen to them with the drums, everything together. You see that? That's melodic. It follows the bass. It follows the kick. So that's what you want is for all of that to happen. Come on. This sucks. Too many solos. All right, here we go. So now the next thing I did was record the trumpet. So I just had to think of a line that would work behind uh, the... the um, behind the melody with the uh, vocals, behind the vocals, and work with the chords. So check it out. So the point of that is the trumpet is moving when the voice is not. And the voice is moving when the trumpet is not. That's one of the keys to having melodies talk to each other. You know, being able to have an instrument be in the background and the front, back, front, back, front. It don't have to be just one the whole time. Uh, you can take turns, okay? And then here, I took a trumpet solo. So here, the pad is... Um, I made a pad out of a sine wave. It's just literally just like two unison, uh, detune, 0.06. I got the chaos uh, um, LFO on here just to randomize the pitch, and it sounds cool. And I mixed that with, this is just a regular piano sound from Addictive Keys. That's the, that's the main piano thing that I, I use, piano VST I use. Um, and besides that, it's just, more of the sample, I mean, more of the vocals, and the drums are going to be coming in and out. So check it. You can see what I'm talking about. Lying on 
So that's cool right here. So when the drums come in, if you look, I actually cut off the lows and cut off the highs so that it'll bring some of the intensity of the drums down. So this is supposed to be like an intimate moment. So it wouldn't make sense for the drums to be blaring, just like hitting super hard behind my trumpet solo. Um, the thing to do is to bring it in slowly. You cut off the highs, cut off the lows, and you slowly bring it back in when you want it to build up. Check it. See that? That creates the buildup. You put a little white noise in here. And then we have a, a section where it's halftime. So I basically have the same groove as before. I just make it so that the snare drum is half as much. And there's no tambourine. <laughs> That's really the only difference on the drums. Um, here I got long notes on the bass. And I added a trombone, two to be exact. Now I know by itself this is boring, but when you put it all together, it, it adds more energy and uh, it just follows the bass line. Just follows the bass. Nothing special. Here I add the uh what am I adding here? Oh, I add the tambourine back and I make it to be regular uh the regular time. <laughs> And then now I have two lines. So the trumpet, where's the trumpet? So here's the top trumpet is playing this long line. While at the same time, I have another line going on with uh, some more trumpets. Right, and with the vocals going on at the same time, and that's pretty much the whole song. Yeah, and that's pretty much how I produce the song. I mean, oh, you should put some side chaining on it. I side chain the kick to the whole to everything that's not the drums. So basically all of these um, instruments here, I just highlighted them all and grouped them in here for this thing I call all music. And I put my side chain compressor right here and voila, there it is. So if you learned something new, uh, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button below and notification bell so you know the next time that I have a video. Uh, leave a comment, like, and like it. Uh, let me know what you learned from here and if there's any more topics you want me to cover specifically. Um, yeah, so look out for the next video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.